Guys, when it comes to prepping and survival, there are items that really you need to kind of stock up on and or hoard, <laughs> if that's a good word for it. Uh, there are certain items that you will just continually need. And it's very important in a grid down situation to have those items. So today we're gonna to take a look at 15 items. There are a lot more, but these to me are my top 15. And guys, if you're serious about prepping and survival, check out Survival Dispatch Insider, one of the best resources on the web, some of the top names in the survival world. We upload exclusive videos there every week. I have a link down below in the description, check it out. One of the big items that you wanna stock up is toilet paper. Uh, now toilet paper is big and it's clunky, the rolls are thick, but having toilet paper, there, it's not really a good substitute. Uh, that's this inexpensive. We always try to buy these uh, 12 packs and then just stock them up. Uh, but definitely toilet paper to me is one of the first. Duct tape, um, of course you've got your standard duct tape and we have Gorilla Tape, which is great. Uh, I would be careful buying some of the lesser expensive or the lesser known brands just because you want something that's really gonna hold. Uh, if you're needing duct tape, you really need it to stick. Now the US military uses 100 mile an hour tape. That is also excellent. Comes in a lot of different colors. Uh, this is just a few rolls that I have, but I try to keep extra duct tape uh, you know, in a good place that doesn't get too hot because you don't want this to become sticky and unusable. Fire is something that's essential in a survival situation. One big thing that I like to do is when I'm, you know, in line at Walmart or wherever, I grab a pack of lighters uh, and I just throw them in, you know, in the bag and I keep these. I've got a container where I keep all these different lighters. I like BIC. They just seem to work most of the time, uh, but I also keep a lot of matches. Uh, strike anywhere matches are my preferred choice, uh, but I do use regular standard matches as well. Box type is what I like. Of course, stormproof matches really are probably the best. I mean, that's really what you need. What I like is this little container. It does have, it does keep the, the matches themselves in this container all waterproof. So even though they are stormproof and you do have a little tender uh, and you do have a striker right here on the side. So, you know, this is just another way. Now, of course, these are a lot more expensive than your standard matches, so you can really stock up on these. But I would definitely have some stormproof matches. Of course, here's one of my fire kits, and I have my, you know, ferrocium rod and different fire tenders and things like that. But typically, as far as stocking up, matches and lighters are really what I try to stock up on. Batteries are definitely something to have on hand. Really, Duracell to me lasts longer than the, any of the other batteries, for me, including Energizer. Uh, and so I've always keep these handy. Uh, and then also the CR123s, uh, I use those in a lot of my flashlights and in a lot of my optics, we have different small batteries, uh, like watch battery types. The 2032s are a big one. All these boxes have uh, the 2032s. I buy a lot of those on eBay and bulk packs. Also the uh, CR123s, rechargeable batteries have a recharger, but over long term, you know, you may not have power, and so I don't really depend too heavily on my rechargeable batteries. Uh, these, the CR123s will last up to 10 years shelf life. Of course, your standard Duracell, double A's and triple A's, guaranteed to last for 10 years. And honestly, guys, we live in an electronic age. We're always needing batteries anyway, so it's good to have a stockpile. Flashlights are good for any time. Uh, one of the things about light is it is your number one security tool. So you want to definitely have flashlights, and of course this goes along with the batteries. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you have the old school, like this old mag light. This can be used as a baton <laughs> for self-defense, but so can this Olight Warrior X. I mean, with the crenulated bezel. In fact, flashlights are number one for a self-defense weapon. Uh, so that is one thing, but there's a ton of different choices. Headlamps, you know, your old military surplus uh, flashlights, Again, this is a little more of an advanced headlight by Zebra Light. And then you've got also light lanterns. And so this can be used as a flashlight, but we can also use it as a light, you know, in certain situations where a candle just doesn't work. And this compacts down, it's really easy to carry. Then here at the front, then you have a flashlight here. So there's so many different choices, but here's the reason why you need to hoard some flashlights. Uh, if something goes wrong with a flashlight, which they tend to do, I mean, they're electronics, you have extras, you have backups. And with light, again, being your number one security tool, it's important to have light. Candles, a big one. Uh, we just had our power out the other night, had a transformer to blow. 
we had a ton of candles we were able to light the house up fine without using undue power from our flashlights etc of course we had our flashlights and we could use those but you know the different type candles uh, even tea light candles there's a lot of different options these are just really inexpensive candle options of course my wife gets the big ones you know you can get the 12 hour candles there's a lot of different choices but you can start out cheap and build from there and guys who hasn't had their power out at some point unscented bleach not only cleans uh, keeps things clean but also you can purify water and that's probably the most important part of bleach uh, you need to make sure again that it is unscented and you can go with a brand name or here I have just a you know generic we have two big Berkey so we can definitely stay in drinking water but having the bleach serves so many different purposes plastic bags uh, one of the big things about plastic bags especially these contractor bags and typically I get these at Home Depot they are heavy meal they are awesome I keep them in my go bag uh, they can be used as a tarp they can be used as a poncho I mean there's it can be used to carry stuff I mean there's a ton of different things that these trash bags will do and the heavy meal are the best to really stock up on but we do use the standard compact bags as well. There may be times where we need them. And so having some kind of bag, you can just throw things in it. You can haul it. I mean, there's so many different things. And really, guys, try to get some of the best bags that are out there, the real tough ones. You don't want something falling out. Uh, but again, bags, all different types. But the contractor bags, to me, are number one. Along with the same theme of trash bags, keeping these small little grocery bags uh, can be really useful, especially hauling things. You can load a bunch of stuff in here, especially small items, and then you can carry it. Uh, so this is something that's really easy. Of course, it's cheap because you get them for free, and there's a lot of different ways that you can store these to keep them out of the way. Definitely a useful item are tarps, uh, and we just get the standard tarps. They're fairly inexpensive, you know, with the eyelets, uh, and then we have some the heavy-duty tarps. These are really good. Uh, and then here I have a camo tarp, and uh, I like to keep them in the plastic if we're storing them, just to kind of keep it nice and clean. But uh, we even have canvas tar tarps that we use, and a number of different types. Uh, and this is something that I definitely want to keep plenty of. Uh, you know, if you have some kind of uh, environmental accident, maybe your house, you know, a tree limb goes through it, you can put this over it. You know, a vehicle, you know, you can put tarp over it if you, you know, like have a window to break. But then just covering up things. There's so many uses for tarps. Uh, laying this down on the ground if you're in a bug out situation. I mean, these can even create a lean to, they can create a shelter. Again, guys, there's just so many things you can do with tarps. Socks, another great item to be able to hoard. Uh, you know, definitely we wear through socks. I mean, they can go out fairly easily. And so a good pair of quality socks will last longer. But, you know, if you really want to, uh, and of course, there's so many different choices, too, with the different materials. Uh, here we have some Keens, and these have their wool. These are excellent. Then we have some, just some sports socks. But the main thing is, having socks is going to protect your feet, and you need to be able to protect your feet. One of the things about the homeless is that is the number one item they need, and it's the least donated item. So just a little side note with socks. Go buy some socks, take it to your local shelter or, you know, Goodwill or something like that and donate them. But first, hoard some for yourself. <laughs> Salt's definitely another one of those things that you need to store, uh, but you need to keep it in a cool, dry place. You don't want it to clump up. But, you know, there are reasons why we buy salt licks if we have livestock. They need salt. You need salt. It has to be part of your diet. I like salt with iodine in it. Of course, you need iodine, so this really helps. Uh, you do have a lot of salt in foods, but in a grid down situation, you're not going to have as much processed food, so there's not going to be as much salt. So keeping salt's a no-brainer. Guys, most of the seed that you find at the store is non-GMO, but it's hybrid seed. And so what happens is it doesn't reproduce. Uh, finding some heirloom seeds, uh, are really key to long-term survival. Uh, being able to not only plant, but also to harvest the seeds once the plants, you know, have died down in the, in the fall. And so getting your seeds, going ahead and getting you a garden. Guys, it's really crazy to try to plant a garden for the first time after an SHTF situation or after grid down. And so for long-term, this is the only item really that pertains to food, but this is your self-sustaining way to keep food on the table non-hybrid seeds and there's a ton of different places you can get these guys there's a lot of things that run on propane here we have a couple of the small little camping uh, propane cylinders 
But of course, those that are on your your grills, you know, having extras, having them filled up. We always keep about four or five that are filled at all times in case we need them. And then we keep a supply of these smaller ones. And there's a lot of different things that you can attach to these. So definitely, this is a great way to be able to have some kind of fuel. And it's actually pretty stable. Now, going a little old school with a lantern uh, can give you some light, and it's refillable with either your lamp oil, you can put kerosene in it, um, you can put different things to be able to run this. So the big thing that you need to hoard are lamp wicks and lamp oil, uh, or at least try to have some on hand. But the wicks are definitely important. You may be able to find oil or something to burn in your lantern, uh, but without the wick, it's not going to do you any good. Also, if you have Coleman lanterns, you know, the uh, mantles, having those stocked up also is a huge plus. Guys, cordage, uh, you can definitely use cordage in a lot of different ways. Uh, it is one of the elements for a survival kit. Paracord seems to be the most versatile. Uh, one of the big reasons is because true paracord is the 550 cord, which means it's rated up to 550 pounds. Seven strand core means that there are seven strands inside here that you can utilize. And so, Obviously, the military has been using this forever, but civilians as well. This stuff is gold. So make sure that you have plenty of paracord. I have tons of this stuff, and uh, I'll tell you what, I use it all the time. And guys, obviously, having a stock of water and food and those things, that's really a no-brainer. Guys, last but not least, medical supplies. I mean, you need to keep the essentials, uh, whether it's you know gauze, tape, uh, splint material, uh, here we have one of the Amp 3. This is the Outfitters kit. This thing is like a clinic in a roll. This thing is awesome. It's not cheap, but guys, I'll tell you, it has all the essentials. Of course, uh, USN ER Doc is a emergency room doctor that puts this together. I've got reviews on this and a lot of other things, so I don't want to really get too much into it. You know, having a tourniquet, uh, chest seals, um, you know, just a lot of different things. You have some scissors. We have a ton of things in here. This is actually from Skinny Medic, and that's another one, Medical Outfitters. Definitely a great source for your medical gear. And guys, if your child is injured and you need to get help, or your wife, or those you love, uh, you definitely need to have some supplies on hand because medical emergency services may not be around. And then definitely your boo-boo kits, which are Band-Aids, antibiotic ointments, you know, regular gauze, things like that. So having a good, well-stocked medical kit and adding to it regularly is just smart. Now definitely there are other items and down in the description would be a great place for you to put those items. A lot of people look through the comments and it makes it really nice to be able to help one another down there. I mean this is a community and we help one another. It's the reason why I bring these videos guys is for you to be prepared. Hopefully there were some things on this list that maybe you hadn't thought about. Uh, but obviously down in the comments is a great place to take care of the ones I didn't think about. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.